All right. Uh, my clock says 3 p.m., so let's uh, get the show on the road. Welcome, everyone. Uh, this is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel, and this is the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast number 50. I think this is the third one that we've been doing um, uh, where the title is The Value of Something. I think this is number three. So today we're, t we're talking about the value of shadow boxing and uh, solo training in Jeet Kune Do, which are kind of synonymous terms, I guess you, you could say. Right. Um, hey, Victor. So, as usual, as you guys are logging in, um, I know where you're from, right? But that doesn't mean that everybody on, on Facebook knows where you're from. So, as you guys log in and join in, uh, just say where you're coming in from and do the hitting of the like button and all that good stuff. Uh, let me just clear a screen here on my laptop and we will get this rolling. Um, oh, happy Halloween, everybody. Right? Um, yeah, because I know that, that so so a lot of you have to go get your um, Halloween party groove on. So um, so I'm going to start today's broadcast at the end, right? And tell you the conclusion that, that I reached a, a, a long time ago, which is that solo training is an integral part of um, that, that quest that is fundamental in the development of self-discipline or self-perfection, right? Shadow boxing as well is, is one of the avenues to that self-perfection, which we should all be seeking as um, not just martial artists and not just Jeet Kune Do martial artists, but as human beings also, okay? So anybody who is in a hurry to go out and get their... Um, Halloween party groove on, you can leave the broadcast already because that's the conclusion, okay? You can jump off right now and go do your thing and have fun, but be careful, right? Now, for those of you who stay, if we dial it back to the beginning, so I'll start you with a, 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 a story, a Thai boxing story, right? It was in New York. It must have been the early 1990s because I tested for, for, for Thai boxing instructorship in 91 and I fed the tie pads at this seminar for, for two people, right? So it must have been sometime after 1991. And we were staying at one of those, up in New York, they call them motor lodges, right? I think everybody else calls them motels or something, but in New York, they're called motor lodges. And this particular one, um, from my room, I could look out onto the rooftop of like another part of, of the, of, I call them hotels, right? Of the hotel. And what I saw early in the morning was Ajahn Chai, right? Surachai Sirisut. I saw him on the roof shadow boxing, right? Now, I don't remember if I asked him if it was at that particular occasion or, or not, but I remember that sometime subsequent, I asked him um, about the development of proper form, like what, what's a way to, uh, to, to develop proper form. And he said, shadow boxing. So then I asked him about speed. He said, shadow boxing, right? I asked him about, um, you know, coordination and, and stuff like that. He said, shadow boxing. So as thick as I am, I still got the, 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 the lesson, right? That shadow boxing was a value. Um, and uh, what was I going to, I was going to tell you something. Oh, so then here's the other thing, right? Okay, so Adrian Chai says shadow boxing is it. And Rob Kelly just came on. Rob Kelly is my senior in both JKD and Muay Thai. And so Rob will, will verify this. Adrian Chai used to tell us in the old days to try to move just like he moved, right? And I remember on another occasion, this is a, in a Sano seminar, and we were in Sarasota. I, now, of course, I don't remember what year it was, right? But we were in Sarasota. And um, I had just finished up my morning run and Sifu Dan was finishing up his morning walk right through the, the, the hotel property. And so, of course, you know, you have an opportunity to, to, to be with Dan and Asano. You're going to fall right into conversation, right? So we started talking um, and I asked him if it was okay to copy the way that somebody else moves and he said, of course it's okay if that person's movement, if the way that person does things is um, emblematic, right, or, or, or 
um, epitomizes what is considered the proper form in that particular activity, right? So, um, and and it's, sometimes people um, people get the idea, right? This whole thing about copying, you know, because you'll hear, oh, the, the Bruce Lee fanboys, they try to copy Bruce Lee. Nobody tries to copy Bruce Lee, but if you if you are informed in the way that you do things by the way that the, 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 the top level people do it. So if I try in Muay Thai to move like Ajahn Chai moves, I'm never going to move the way he does. I can never look like him, right? Because I'm not him. But you could bet that trying to be like him, trying to copy him will lead me to the development of my own um, proper form, right? So if you, if you guys doubt me on that, you talk to Rob Kelly and you'll get the authority on that, right? So, um, uh, so I took Ajahn Chai's words and Sifu Dan's words to heart, right? As any smart individual would. And um, I, I, the last time I shadow box was yesterday morning. Okay, right. That that's that's what I mean by by taking it to to heart, right? So to apply the JKD training methodology to this discussion of shadow boxing and solo training, right? Here's what we do: we take a look at the idea of the three stages of a technique, right? So I got to show you something. Um, hang on a second. Let me just let me not mess this up here. Yeah, you stay there. You stay there. Okay. How many of you guys have this this book? I, I think it's hot off the press, right? I got mine uh, last week. This is Jeet Kune Do, The Way of Simplicity by uh, Joaquin Marcelo, who is um, a JKD instructor under the late uh, Ted Wong, right? So I couldn't find the page number, but if you do have this book, it's in chapter three, right? Um, where they talk about the stages of technique. You can find it also in, in the... Um, in the good Angel Avila says that he has one. You can find it also in uh, the Tao of Jeet Kune Do, right? The stages of a technique. So there is synchronization with self, there is synchronization with an opponent, and then there's the application under fighting conditions. So since we're talking about solo training and shadow boxing, obviously, um, number one, synchronization of self is our target for today's discussion, right? So the subsets of synchronization of self are one, correct form, um, precision, and augmenting speed progressively, and then synchronization of the whole. So we're talking obviously about high, high levels, high, high degrees of coordination, right? So let me tangent off here for, um, for a, a second. I'll get all... Um, I'll get all metaphysical and philosophical on you, right, for a moment. So this idea, you see, of spending time alone, developing yourself, right? You, you realize what we're talking about here, right? We're talking about taking responsibility for your own development. We're talking about building, building up a vision of yourself as a person of achievement. You, you, you get that, right? So it's not really, you know, I mean, in, in JKD, we can always leave it just at the physical level if we want. But if we keep in mind that there's the physical art and there's the philosophy or the philosophical um, art or the philosophical component of the art, then you understand that a lot of times the application can go a little bit, um, a little bit deeper, right? Um, so, for example, you'll hear people say a lot, you, 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 well, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Um, what you see is what you get. And a lot of times when somebody says that, they're saying it to you. So if I say to you, what you see is what you get, I'm telling you that what you see in and of me is me. So that's what you get. What you get is me. But I forget where it was that I came across this, but somebody took that and made the whole thing reflexive, right? Right? So that what you see is what you get. So now the you doesn't refer to the person out there. The you refers back on yourself. So what a person sees as in, in his or her mind, what that person is able to, to imagine vivid, vividly, to visualize and what have you, what you, the individual, see 
is what you, the in individual, will get as in produce in your own life. But we were talking about shadow boxing and solo training, weren't we? But I hope you guys get that metaphysical connection, right? Um, it, because if you think about it, people like um, we were talking uh, last night, we were talking about um, Michael Jordan and, 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 and what have people like that, right? You can always find reports of people like Bruce Lee, people like M Michael Jordan, Muhammad Ali, all these guys that talked about the, 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 their overall development, right? The development of their minds, the development of their bodies through tremendous effort at solo practice, right? I mean, you read anything about Michael Jordan and um, there's talk about him being the, fir the first on the court, right? For practice sessions and the last person um, off the court, right? At the same practice session. Okay, so that's the value of solo practice and for us as martial artists, uh, shadow boxing and what have you, right? Um, another, another way, another thing to look at is uh, Chris Kent's um, Jeet Kune Do A to Z. This is volume two and it's um, page 161, right? A thing called uh, essential qualities, right? So essential qualities, speed, power, endurance, coordination, precision, balance, body feel and good form, and flexibility. I'll say it again quickly. I'll try to be a New Yorker. Speed, power, endurance, coordination, precision, balance, body feel and good form, flexibility. All those things, right? All those things can be developed by yourself. You can develop all those things in solo training. You do not need a training partner to work on those essential qualities. Now, I am not, of course, saying that... Um, you know that you, you you're not supposed to have training partners obviously that would that would be ridiculous but you know how sometimes there are people who will use excuses right oh well i don't have somebody to train with so i can't this and i can't that um that ain't true that's not true at all right um you can obviously Right, if you have training equipment, right? So if you have the heavy bag, you have the top and bottom bag, you have a wall bag, you have a, a, a mook jong, right? All those things you can use in your solo training. Of course, you have to be sure that you use them, um, I'll make up a word, a lively. That's not really a word, but I'll make it up, right? Because you know what I mean. You have to use them a lively. You have to use them um, imaginatively, right? Because that's key to, to your development. Don't ever be robotic about what it is that you're doing, right? Um, I know a guy who practiced Chi Sao by himself, okay, um, for a long time before he ever got to touch hands with anybody in Chi Sao. And I can assure you that it helped in his development and his understanding once he touched hands with people. But this guy taught himself and practiced Chi Sao by himself, imagining the feel of his partner's arms on his arms, right? Um, I won't tell you who it is. <laughs> you guys can guess, right? Um, the other thing I want to talk to you about, uh, and we'll, we'll close this up in just a second. Um, so I'll leave you. Okay, here's another story about solo practice. So um, January of 1987. This one I remember without a doubt because I was headed up to New York again, of all places, to Neil Colliff, of all people, of course, right? Um, uh, we were, we, we, Neil had brought Cass Magda in for a seminar. Long story short, I never made it to the seminar because I was in a car accident. That's why I remember that it was January of 87. Um, Neil was nice enough to send me the video of the seminar and the video also of his private lesson with Cass um, in Kali uh, Numerata. I studied that video, I don't know for how long, for months, for years, for whatever. That video of Neil being taught Numerata by Cass. I used that to train myself in Numerata. Long story short, and again, Rob Kelly is somebody who can verify this. If I'm at seminar and Sifu Dan wants, to, wants people to see what he refers to as the classical approach, he will call me up to demonstrate the numerata. And I learned that numerata on my own, essentially, watching video of Neil Colliff and Cass Magda. So I can attest to the value of solo practice for certain things, right? But don't take my word for it. Go here if you guys have this. 
um, page 35 of the Filipino martial arts as taught by Dan and Asano. It's a section on Grandmaster uh, Floro Villabril. And here's what, here's what it says. Um, this, is, this is in um, Grandmaster Floro Vill Villabril's voice. Before I fight, I go to the mountains alone. I pretend my enemy is there. I imagine being attacked, and in my imagination, I fight for real. I keep this up until my mind is ready for the kill. I can't lose. When I enter the ring, no one can beat me already. I already know that man is beaten. Right? But then um, Grandmaster um, 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 Villabril, he finishes off. Right? And so this is why I felt confident in my tangent. Here's what he says. Anything you do, even go to school or find a job, in the morning you make a prayer, walk around and work on your mind and you will do it. Okay? Now, for those who may be a little bit upset that we're, we're using Kali references, right? <laughs> Look up. <laughs> I'm just kidding, right? Look up page um, 318 of uh, Jeet Kune Do, Commentaries on the Martial Way, uh, to see examples of Bruce Lee's personal workout, right? Page three, uh, 318. You'll see that um, he worked on what we call nowadays core, right, and flexibility. In the old days, we called it abs. He worked on abs and flexibility every day, weight training, biking, jump rope, and kicking on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, punching and running on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, right? So this is, because this is something you will hear in, in JKD uh, talk all the time, um, it's a perfect example of the extraordinary lying or having its roots in the simple, right? Bruce Lee had that work ethic to train every day, I think with the exception of Sundays, take Sundays off, right? Um, but in its simplicity, so there's a section in um, uh, Joaquin Marcelo's book uh, and also uh, um, in the foreword to the commentary book, right? Where Ted Wong talks about simple isn't easy. And you'll hear him talking about Bruce Lee um, saying that he wasn't necessarily so special. He was just very dedicated to his training. And I think I've heard Sifu Dan say, um, kind of like um, um, Bruce Lee said something like, I, I'm not extraordinary, I do ordinary things in an extraordinary manner. I think it's some, something like that, right? So as Ted Wong says, Bruce Lee was so good because he made himself so good. Okay, that's it. Value of solo training and shadow boxing in JKD. Uh, feel free to share, like, comment, ask questions. I'll go through everything um, um, after the, the video is posted. Sign up for notifications on Facebook for when we go live. Sign up for notifications on YouTube um, when the new videos are posted. There are separate channels, one for the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast and a second one for the um, Jeet Kune Do dialogues. And uh, this Friday, November 2nd, my dialogue partner will be Eleanor Academia Magda, right? That's Friday, November 2nd at 3 p.m. Go to um, I, uh, ilovejikundo.com and uh, where you can get volume one of the Quick Skill series. Um, I won't give you the URL, but I have told you guys that I'm working on a new website. So I won't give you the URL, but if you want to see the work in progress, try to work out what it could be and look it up. <laughs> I'm such a moron. Anyhow, I'll see you. Um, I'll see you, some of you on Friday, and then I'll see the rest of you uh, back here again. Enjoy your Halloween. Be careful. Be safe out there. This is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel, signing off. You guys enjoy. Take care.